I've applied like uh, 500 million times and I've never <laughs> got one answer. But you know, I just have to get better. And uh, I suppose that it will happen. And if not, I'll get a job somewhere else. I don't know. Yeah. Well, usually, when you when you get a, a job in another another place, they're gonna call you man. because I know people like they want our company so bad and they and they apply so many times. Then they got a job in a different company, and then the company they want they call us to to work. So, yeah, no, no, I mean, of course. I mean, I have applied in other ones. I definitely have. I just, uh, uh, I mean, it has happened in some things, and some other things have not happened. I almost went to Romania, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was almost there. And the last test that I did, they were like, eh, like, your stuff is a bit too dark. I don't know, like, I, I really had to get better in a lot of things, so I didn't get the job. I was pretty depressed. Whatever. So did they give you some feedback? Yeah, yeah, they gave me really good feedback. They were very nice. Uh, so I at least appreciate the fact that you know I had that and I learned from it. I was, but I was like, my mind was already in Romania. I was like, yeah, okay, cool. Now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna live in Romania. Fuck, I don't care. Yeah, but it didn't happen. Let's go, guys. Q and A. Q and A sessions. No, it's all good. It's, you guys are in deep conversation. <laughs> all about oh, that. I think it's good, man. Yeah, this is really good. Yeah. Really curious. I wonder if he hand paints that little little paint splat right there. Yeah, that little texture that he makes, huh? It's uh, very nice. This right here, this little this little dark mark. I love that dude's work. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyway, um, Q and A. Feel free to ask questions, and I'll try to answer them. Will it still be possible for people outside the U.S. to come to work for video game companies? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't think Trump's going to destroy the world. <laughs> Specifically, right now. If you're in these seven countries, um, yeah, it's going to be harder for you. And it's a temporary band, which means that there's a possibility that it will be over in three months. <sighs> in three months, uh, it could be extended. And uh, I have a feeling it's going to be extended. Because they they're saying, well, we need three months to, you know, come up with a better solution, a better vetting system. Well, we'll see if they do. It's this whole situation is garbage. Any anyway, um, yeah, I mean, there might be Belgian companies. You might not know them, but they they might exist. So re reconsider. But one thing that I would say is, you know, the internet allows people to to work from anywhere, really. You know, working for studio is nice and all, but uh, I know plenty of people who work for free. And I'm sorry, work for free. Uh, work freelance. And that's a pretty lucrative career, too. You know, you don't have to necessarily only be working, is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Uh, for like an in-house company. Uh, some people that I know prefer it. Like they've tried the work in studio and they just, they have no, they have no uh, love for it. I know actually two people I can think of on top of my mind who both worked at a really big studio for like a few months and they were just like, yeah, this is not for me. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't think you're that kind of person. It seems like you might actually enjoy working in studio. Um, but uh, I prefer working in house with other people. It's a lot of fun. But uh, at the same time, I really do enjoy just being at home. I think the reason why I might have not liked it before was just because it was just me and my wife. And although I love my wife very much, you know, just hanging out with her all the time every day can be pretty intense. Yeah, I mean, I don't do that with anybody else. 
<laughs> and even when I was working in studio, it's not like I would hang out with only one person at all times. Uh, I would go to lunch with different people or go to different people's office space and just hang out with them during the days, you know, mix it up. I'd see people consistently, but not all the day either. So working in studio was nice because you would mix it up. Um, but for me, uh, I have my kids now and my kids are a lot of fun to be around. They're always doing something new and they're discovering new things. Mm -hmm. so it's a cool thing to be a part of. So I, I'm actually enjoying my time home. I don't know if I want to necessarily leave this circumstance. <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, there, there's, I wouldn't worry about it. I would say what I would worry about, the only thing you can control is the quality of your work and the people you know. That's the only two things you can really control as of now. You can't control whether Belgium will create new jobs for the market. Um, who knows, you might be the person who brings the jobs there. You might start your own company of freelancers up in Belgium. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where Wait, where is Six More Vodka at? That's here in Germany, in Berlin. Yeah. So it's not too far. You don't have to come to the States. You can go somewhere else. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's dude, America is not the only place anymore. It used to be relatively the only place, but there's places in London now. Like I think Framestore for instance. Ireland as well. There's yeah, lot. there's there's they're they're blossoming because you know, technology is easier and more accessible. Like the, the technologies that we had only exclusive ownership over. Isn't isn't Good Game Studio in Germany too? Uh yeah, in Hamburg. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's plenty of great studios that don't live in America. Like the two that you named specifically, Dominique, uh, Riot and um, Blizzard. Yeah, they're they're in Southern California. That's in my neighborhood. Blizzard's like right, like ten minutes to fit, 10, ten to fifteen minutes away from where I live. And then, That's uh, crazy. And then Riot is just an hour drive away. It's just up in LA, Santa Monica, specifically. So, yeah, I mean, no, the coolest ones are in the United States, I would say. Yeah, that's just all perspective. Dude, you got um, oh man, what's the? Because what's the I love the guy. Yeah, yeah. This um, uh, I have some suits actually worked there. The um, it's the CG pro or CD project. Yeah, CD Project Red, right? Oh, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, yeah, America. That uh, studio is awesome. I mean, the guys who <laughs> made Last Guardian, that's uh, Sony Japan, Studio Japan. And then there is uh, Final Fantasy, you know, Squaresoft. True, true. Oh, you also got, uh, what is it, From Silver? Or um, whoever made the Gothic series. I forget the name. From Software makes one of my favorite game franchises. Uh, uh, Helen, he works in France. In, in Hold on. Just give me one second. I'm supposed to, I'm expecting a call from my doctor. This might be him. Give me one second. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's the name of the company where, uh, they, they're doing Dishonored, uh, where, like, Sergei Kolesov, uh, works? Oh, uh, that's, that's Ubisoft. No, it's not Ubisoft. No, no. It's, uh, it's um... That looks like it was the wrong number. And whatever, whatever games. Oh, well, I'm gonna say I'm gonna do it right now. So Dishonor. Yeah, the guys who made Dishonor. They're a Poland company, aren't they? Poland. Oh, they're, they're France, I think. Um, Are they? Bethesda. No. No, no. I, I know. I know that Peling, like in Piotr, they work in this company, but it's. Yeah, they're both in Arkane Poland Studios. too. Arcane Studios. And where's that at? I thought, where's it located? I thought it was in France. I thought it was in France. I'm sorry. Well, I don't know where it's at. I'm just saying, look into it. Because those, both those guys are in Poland. We also got uh, Piranha Bytes. And, uh, you know. Yeah, so, so, so the, the moral of the story, Dominique, is don't worry about it. You might not work for Blizzard or Riot right away. But you might work for other companies that are just as good, if not better. You know, I have plenty of people who work at Blizzard uh, and uh, hate it, hate working there, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, I uh, was not one of those people. I love working at Blizzard. Um, but I had, we would, I would hang out with these guys and they would just complain. And I'm like, all right, well, 
get and then get out. I'm not a big fan of uh, people who complain um, about something that they don't do anything about. Like it's it's one thing to I, I'm a I'm okay with people complaining and then they do something about it. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I'm not a big fan of people who keep complaining and do nothing ever, <laughs> and they just keep blaming the company or blaming other people, right? And they're just like, "Look, that person's doing this, and this person's doing that." I feel like uh, I feel like that's just a waste of time and effort, and uh, it, and it just creates a false narrative in your life that like the world is out to get you, kind of thing, and it's just not the case. Like, the world doesn't care about you. <laughs> you know, the world has its own problems to worry about, bigger, badder problems. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I, I usually um, I usually just ignore that. I am, um, for instance, you know, uh, I was working for this company, and uh, I didn't like working there at all. Like, the project I was working on just wasn't really cool and interesting. And I wasn't making um, real strides in my portfolio. Like, I just felt like I was getting worse. Uh, in fact, I felt like the – I felt really weird because I was making the most money I've ever made. But then I just hated the work. And I'm very happy I had that experience because it taught me that money isn't what makes me happy. I thought it was. I thought if I make more money, I live an American dream. Um, I just got done talking to my tax guy and, you know, he, he broke it down that like, you know, um, like he told me all the numbers of how much I made and the profit that I made, you know, over the years. And I was like, where'd all that money go? Right. And, and, and more importantly is like, like I make a lot of money, but yet it didn't make me any happier during those years. Right. Like I think 2015 and 16 were probably some of the hardest years for me ever. And I was making the most money I've ever made in my whole career. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I was upset. I was bothered by this. I was making a complaint to myself because I was my own boss. And that's why I'm living the life I'm living now, which is more modest, more earnest. Um, I have no interest of working for big, bad companies anymore. Uh, and I usually encourage my students to not let that be a huge factor of your happiness either. Uh, I think a lot of my students are going to be very level-headed and re really amazing artists who work for these big companies, but also at the same time find time to make efforts to work on their own personal work. Uh, Mulan, for instance, he, he got a job at Six More Vodka, right? And then I saw him recently trying to do some Zebra stuff again, personal work again. Like, he's finally back into it. You know, like, oh. he, he took a break. Yeah. yeah, he took a break for a second, and I was kind of worried. But um, yeah, I know him. Yeah, yeah, I know him nice. too. <laughs> I, 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 it's so cool that like I, I've met him like in real life, whatever. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, me too. Yeah, he's a, he's one of my first students I've ever had, um, and for the World of Pencil yeah. Mentorships, and uh, I've. What's his name? Sorry, what's his name? Milan, M I L I or M I L A N. Uh, Dominique, can you share his um, portfolio in the in the group so people can check it out? I think I shared it before, but it, regardless. Um, yeah, him and I are really, really good friends. We're very close. And I um, helped giving him guidance a few times. And he, he's a really smart guy. He, he's on top of his own ambitions and goals and what makes him happy. And that's all I really care about for anybody else. I don't really care if you worked on the next Star Wars, if you are not happy as an artist. Okay. I know people who worked on their things and they just feel, they just don't feel as accomplished, you know, um, even though, even though they have a lot of accomplishments under their belts, not everybody, but quite a few, you'd be shocked how many people feel this way. And as you guys start to get into the industry and more and more, you'll start seeing this more and more and more and more. And my words hopefully will resonate with you when you start to see it. Okay. And be like, you know, AJ made a very strong point about, you know, it's not about the job. It's about what I find personally value, valuable in my day-by-day -day as an artist. 
because I want that to happen for you guys. I really want you guys to be successful as people, not successful as just artists. I think being a successful artist is just a thing that will come if you guys just keep practicing and painting and designing and, you know, getting tutorials, watching YouTube videos, learning how to get better, right? That will just come in time. Um, but overall, you know, don't don't count on it being like the end because it won't. Uh, like, think about it like this. Like, in, let's say in three to four years, you guys are all working in industry and you guys are all badasses. Yeah, which is quite possible. Um, that's only three or four years. If you plan to live a little bit longer, <laughs> that's a lot <laughs> of life left to live, you know? Yeah. It's it's not like uh, back in the past, you know, this was like a thing that would take your whole life, like uh, to become an apprentice to a, a master of some sort. You would learn underneath them for about seven to, to ten years, right? That's like a decade of just like training and education and that you would only become a journeyman, which means that you are able to travel on your own accord and, and make money finally off of your own work. Uh, and after several years of that, then you would become uh, towards a master level. So another decade or so of your life, right? Then you would not only become a journeyman and a master, then you can now take on apprentices of your own and then teach them for another 10 years and then eventually just retire and die because people didn't live as long as they do now. <laughs> yeah. So like literally things would take your life, like lifetime. Like imagine, um, um, you know, Michelangelo, he had, um, he would, he would do like these fan art commissions of like for the church and it'll take like his whole, like it'll take decades to do like a project at a time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you guys won't have to deal with any of this stuff. Things move much faster these days. And so you'll reach these goals and then you'll be like, well, now what, <laughs> you know? And that's what I'm trying to warn you guys of like everybody. Uh, there's a lot of books on how to be successful. There's not a lot of books on how, what to do with it. Okay. There's a lot of information on what you need to do to become that successful person. Um, there's not a lot of information on once you get it, what do you do? You know, a lot more people are becoming more successful and they don't know how to deal with it. They don't know how to work with it. And uh, I'm trying to give you guys the foresight to be prepared for that. Uh, one of the tools that I would say is just listen to your intuition. Like once you've gotten uh, to a point where you feel really accomplished, you know, and you feel something differently, like, hey, you know, I'm really into like paper mache, like sculpting, right? For whatever reason, I don't, I'm just throwing that out there, you know? You know, you're an accomplished concept artist working on big games, but you're like, you know, I like to build paper mache. So this is something, a new hobby of mine. Then just go for it. And then eventually maybe you'll become a paper mache sculptor and, and art gallery person. And then maybe then you're like, yeah, you know, but I, I really am really interested in, um, you know, flying kites. And then you start flying kites and then you just follow that path, you know? Never feel like the, the original start of what you've done in the early age is going to define the rest of your life. It can, you know, there's some people that like they find their calling and they just got so lucky and they're just like, this is it. This is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Uh, let me give you two examples of one person who had, who basically had figured it out at a very young age. And then another person who didn't figure it out until their older age, but they both were considered amazing at early ages. Okay. So first example would be Einstein. Einstein at a very early age, around 16 he pretty much was convinced that he was going to figure out the mysteries of the universe. Okay. He was like, I'm going to figure this shit out because this shit's fascinating. And so he spent a lot of his early years to really figure this out. And a lot of what he did, he did very early. Like he, his theory of relativity came to be in when he was 26, when he's in his mid twenties, you know, which is really impressive. But it's, if he's, it's not as impressive if you really think about it, well, he, because he decided to do it at a very younger age, right? That's the first thing. And then the second thing is that, um, you know, when you do it at such a young age, there's a, there's a variable that allows you to stay a little bit more creative, a little bit more forward thinking. You don't have any predispositions yet. You don't have anything to kind of cloud your uh, judgment, right? Because as you get older, you, you start inserting ideas and uh, ideals that are harder to break. Right, that's they they did some tests, 
that proved that the the psychological i'm sorry the the physical the physiological phys, what the the physiological the biological i'm throwing too many words the physical part of your brain the actual biology of it um, doesn't actually slow down when you get older uh, it does slightly and as you get older and older, it obviously it gets much worse. And if you don't take care of yourself, it gets really bad, right? To the point mm -hmm. where you might get Alzheimer's or something terrible. But um, your brain is better. Your brain is actually better and stronger when you're like in your early um, 30s. Like right around the, like the, the late 20s to like the late 40s, your brain is actually pretty good. It's pretty, pretty awesome, you know? Um, the reason why it feels like it's better when you're a kid is because you have nothing to, there's no context to your information. You understand? So the reason why it appears, or at least it feels like you can't take new information when you get older, is not because of physically it's that way. It's because of what you already believe and you're just hardwired to some of these beliefs. Does that make sense? So if you're, if you know that, which I, I discovered, uh, you actually learn how the, you, you start to learn much faster when you realize maybe i don't know this shit <laughs> you know maybe everything i thought i knew is just wrong you know and uh and when you have that skeptical point of view you can really improve your capacity so einstein uh was lucky that he didn't even have to experience that like he did everything when he was he already knew you know when he was very very young right so now the other example the person who happened to be hardwired although they were amazing um, skilled person at what they did was uh, Mozart. Mozart was a prodigy, right? Like just very much like Einstein was. Like he was composing songs at the age of five. But see, the thing is that I uh, Mozart didn't do what he truly loved until he was like late into his life. Because a lot of what he was doing was dictated by his father and him, him and his father had a very terrible relationship, especially towards the end. His father was great to him when he was young, and he, he made him this great musician, but Mozart had different ambitions. He, that wasn't necessarily what he wanted to do, you know? He just happened to be amazing at it because his dad was a great musician, his sister was a great musician, his dad was also a really good teacher, and his dad taught him all what he needed to do. See, that's something that I'm trying to be very cautious of with my daughter because she's really interested in drawing, right? She sees me do it. Yeah. She's really interested. So it's very clear to me that I have no interest in making her do it only because I want her to do it. Uh, I'm making her do it because she actually enjoys doing it. If she doesn't enjoy doing it, then I won't have her do it. Because I'd rather her and I have a great relationship than me, you know, ruining that relationship because of my own um, selfish wants. Because it'd be cool to have a daughter that's a badass, but it's like not necessary. And so um that's another so the example i'm trying to give you guys is that you know um like einstein had it figured out and he just it was his life's goal right mozart didn't have it figured out even though he was an extraordinary talent okay so just because you're good at something doesn't necessarily mean that's your life's work make sense yeah um and so keep that in mind like it can be but it also can't be <laughs> You know, like for me, for instance, I discovered that drawing and painting, uh, as much as I love it, it's not what I really care about. What I really care about is change, like helping people out. I really love helping people out. Uh, I love to teach what I know. That's really enjoying to me. You know, I really enjoy teaching. And I realize it doesn't have to be art. Like art is just the thing that I just happened to choose during the circumstances of my life to become really good at. You know what I mean? And I got really good at it, and then my my passion, my natural passion to help and teach, um, just you know, just made sense to teach people how to paint. And it was like a challenging type of thing because it's like this ideal of you artists, you can't really teach art, like it's something that you have to have, and that kind of stuff is the kind of things I love to challenge, you know. Yeah, I'm like I like that kind of stuff. I like to kind of look deeper and see what actually is the reality, you know. Uh, stuff like that, right? And so, like this, it, this is just how it ended up. And so that's why I feel like right now I'm doing what I really love, which is, is truly just challenging uh, myself as a teacher more than anything else. And so my advice to you guys is that whatever that may be for you, 
you know, keep that in mind, right? Like it might not be, being a concept artist is just maybe the first step. Hold on, my ear is like really itchy. Um, it might be the first step, right? To realizing your real passions. So that's why you should just follow your intuition. Not too much, obviously, to the point where you put yourself in the streets and you're about to die. I think there's rational <laughs> ways of going about it. And it might not be as easy either. It's not like you're, you, that might not happen, you know, and then you've made a mistake. Um, you know, there's a point in my life where I almost lived out of my car, you know, but I, but I didn't, and I'm still here. I'm teaching y'all, right? That's right. You know, and even if I did live out of my car, I don't think it would have been the end. It would have just been a, a lesson learned. Uh, the fact that I almost did was a huge lesson, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so, like I said, there can be an opportunity for big mistakes is what I'm trying to get at. But, um, you know, you can avoid them more and more these days if you just be a little bit more attentive. You can't avoid them all. Uh, in fact, I encourage that you have some level of failure and anticipate that failure, right? Because uh, failure is a huge tool to learn from. You learn from failure more than you learn from your successes, right? It's, it's really, um, our brains are really wired for that. They're really good at, at like, like taking a look at, hey, that really sucked. What can we do differently next time? And it, it it's really good. Your, your guys' psychological, uh, or your brain on the psychological level is really good. If it takes some real trauma, um, it will, it will, it will let you think more logically. It'll let you think differently, you know. Mm. Like, you think an example like this whole Trump stuff, right? Like, there's a lot of people who are truly convinced that he's awesome. And um, you know, I was talking to some students of mine who used to be students, and um, you know, some people are supporters of Trump, and I'm like totally fine with your opinions. But I was trying to like figure it out, and I, I came to the conclusion that some of them are not necessarily supporters of Trump. They're just supporting his policies and certain policies, not all of them. You know, but certain ones. And this idea of, you know, real um, real change, real additive, like additive, adaptive, what the, adaptive. Mm -hmm. And it's like hard to see these big words while I'm painting. I don't know what's going on. <clears throat> you know, it's hard to be adaptive when you've already been kind of a strong point of, I already believe in this guy, but I hear what everyone's saying, and it might make some sense, but they need to know that they might not know. You know, it's, it's just kind of weird back and forth that I'm starting to notice, right? And I, I also, uh, I remember I was talking with somebody, and, you know, they brought up the point of, like, you know, redistribution of wealth, and uh, I was like, you know, I feel indifferent about that, so I don't really feel the need that. I want to argue. Like, I, I at one point I agree with you, and at another point I I don't know what the solution is. You know, so I was able to admit that maybe I don't really know. Um, but I definitely feel pretty strongly um, about his um, his ban and his foreign policies are just so they're just so bad, and and they're really dangerous. You know. And uh, I think the problem that I have with a lot of these supporters is not so much that I think that they're bigots. <laughs> I really don't. I actually don't believe some of these people are racist or really mean people. I, I think they're just so cognitively dissonant, meaning that they, they're the part of their brain is just so committed to believing that they're not entirely wrong, that they won't allow themselves to be even a little bit wrong. Right. And that's the problem I have. It's not so much that they support Trump is that they're they're actually emulating what I believe was wrong with Trump, which is he thinks he's the best and that nothing he does is wrong and it's everyone else's fault. And that's what I'm trying to tell you guys is that don't complain because it only brings more trouble in your life, right? And that's the problem I have with the president of the United States at the moment is that he is just this guy that can't accept failure. Like he won't learn from his mistakes. He hasn't. And he just keeps making them, and it's it's very very frightening. Uh, have you guys heard about the the? Well, before I talk about this more pillow stuff, like um, I just want to say before I do, like that's the main point I want to make is that 
working for these big companies and stuff is definitely a goal you guys should strive for. I don't disagree with that at all. Go for it. Um, but think of beyond that. Like, what is the bigger scope of it? Like, why why do you want to work at such a studio? You know, like what what is the reason? Mm-hmm. And if it's for very um, shallow reasons, like making more money, uh, moving your status in the industry, uh, then know that. So that when you do those things, then you, you move on to the next goal. You know what I mean? Because there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with being like wanting to make more money and to have a better resume. But uh, the reason why I say they're shallow is because they, they only satisfy you for a short amount of time. You know, they're not, mm-hmm. they're not highly fulfilling. Okay. Like you'll get there and you won't feel fulfilled. I promise you, <laughs> you know, if, if your goals were initially like, for instance, like when I worked at Blizzard, I was so happy, but it only lasted like a year and a half. Cause then I was just like, well, same old, same old, just designing stuff for Blizzard every day. <laughs> you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's pretty much that. And it's like, you know, I really want to teach like i really like teaching you know i'll do i'll make gumroad videos gumroad tutorials and that's when i started the whole gumroad craze and then i did my mentorships which i have been doing consistently for the last three years and i don't feel tired at all of it i actually enjoy it a lot i really do and i think this is my life's calling um and uh, with this whole policy stuff that Tr- trump's doing and making it harder for people to come uh, me and my one of my best friends john who helps like monitor some of these classes him and i talked about some solutions and well, one thing that we want to do is make these events that he has these makeshift events um also have like a donation jar kind of thing and we're going to build like some sort of trust fund or bank account savings that will help um help students abroad to help them pay for their visas and their their um their paperwork mm-hmm. uh even maybe their flights with the help of people already here yeah, and it's actually inspired by this whole fucking ban. <laughs> He's like, okay, so Donald Trump's going to make it harder for people to come here, then we're going to make it easier. That that was one of the things. Um, at the Academy of Art, you know, there's a lot of international students, um, like especially from Asia and stuff. And uh, I think that one of the things that kind of bummed a lot of people out was, you know, just like starting a couple years ago, a lot of companies started like, pulling back on their uh, help with, like, visa-related, you know, like, work opportunities. Like, they stopped kind of, like, you know, a lot of companies used to be like, oh, if you're, like, international, like, we'll help you, you know, you can work here and we'll help you with your visa and, like, citizenship and stuff. Sure. And they're, like, not not doing that as much anymore. And that was kind of, like, that's that's also not helping, like, the situation at all. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Unfortunate. Yeah. So, uh... Fuck that noise. Yeah. yeah. We'll, yeah. We'll, we'll, we can do something about it. Remember, uh, like I said earlier, you, you can complain, but if you don't do anything, then stop complaining. So I was yeah. like, well, I'm going to complain. I'm doing my part. I'm making some, uh, I'm making a very, very bold statement online, you know? Um, yeah. I know a lot of my peers are a little bit more, were, are a little bit more reserved because, you know, they don't want to burn any bridges. Um, yeah, I don't, no, I don't think I'm going to burn any bridges. I think I'll be fine. I don't either. I think, <laughs> I think I'll be absolutely fine. Uh, in fact, uh, I've been getting more followers than I've been losing followers. And so mm-hmm. it's, it's actually probably propelling my, my career versus detrimentally. I just got to be obviously very cautious of everything I say and what I do, but stay firm to what I believe in, which is, this, I think this is garbage. Now, whether his, like, because some people, like, the problem that I'm running into is a lot of people believe that his other policies are great, and I'm like, okay, that's cool. Like, you know, I actually don't want to dispute that maybe he has some good ideas elsewhere. Like, I don't know. I don't. I just genuinely don't know. But I do know that this is a terrible idea. You know, um, for instance, uh, like I was about to go into. You guys hear about the Yemen raid? Do you guys hear about that? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Why? Yeah. So he basically sent <laughs> last week, and he sent uh, Navy SEALs over there. The mission was a complete disaster. The the seals went in there, completely surrounded. Um, one of them died. Four of them, or three to four of them, got injured. And um, they had to call in for an airstrike to get 
you know, basically not get murdered. And then uh, airstrike basically saved their lives, but at the cost of killing um, potentially 13 to 14 civilians, people that had probably had nothing to do with this skirmish, uh, especially one uh, eight-year-old little girl, Yemen girl, who, by the way, her father was was an extreme radical, right, for the Al-Qaeda, if I remember correctly. And then they drone striked him, Obama drone striked him without any, without any, um, uh, what you call it, without any court trial because he was an American citizen. And so they just, they just executed him. That's just, that's not law. <laughs> that's not justice. So yeah, he might've been extremist and he might've done some terrible things, but you don't just fucking bomb people. Right. Like, yeah. especially if he's an American citizen, like you can put him to trial, put him in jail, like fucking put him to the system. Mm-hmm. Anyways, they're like, no, we'll just bomb him. That's Obama. Obama did that. I disapprove of that as well. Um, so basically, her father gets murdered. Her brother gets murdered in the same way, uh, but in, like incidentally. And now she she got murdered from an airstrike. And you know, like the only reason why she was even probably in that camp was probably because her father got murdered, and they're trying to keep, find a Salem for her. And these extremists were probably like, "See, Americans are evil. Like, look what they did." You know, come with us. We'll protect you. And now she's gone. And she's an eight-year-old. Eight-year-olds don't know what the fuck's going on, dude. Like, she was definitely being groomed to become a terrorist. But it wasn't her fault. You know, it wasn't like she wanted that life. And um, and now she's dead. Uh, they they tried to go pick up this this crew, and they couldn't. All right, it was, that was also a complete disaster. So they lost the, the aircraft, so they had to destroy it so that they didn't get any kind of, like, you know, engines or... You know any extra weaponry, so they had to destroy that, right? And then you know the Trump administration right now is spinning it like, well, you know, we lost. It was a, it was definitely a lot of things were lost, and you can't say it's a complete success when people die or got hurt. But the amount of the amount of uh, data that we got from this this raid was is instrumental to saving countless lives in the future. And I'm thinking, no, it's not. Like, I just thought about it. I was like, no, how the fuck is that possible? They know that you raided them. They know that you got their data. They know that you did this. It's one thing if you go in there, like, Splinter Cell style, right? Go in there, take their data without them knowing. And then when they go to um, do an attack, you're, like, right there ready to go and catch them in the act, right? Like, that's, that's how you can prevent it is that they don't even know you're coming. But now they know. Like, you think that they're not going to just be like, well, they got some of our data, so let's just not attack this day. Let's just change our strategy. Oh, now they know where some of our camps are at. Well, why don't we just move, relocate? Oh, you think they can't do that? Yeah. So it is literally (laughs) an utter and complete failure. It's like just completely, there's nothing you can say that will prove me otherwise. There's nothing on those, like, there's no data that would be on that that I don't see that they can just reformat or restructure to just justify this whole raid and then calling it a success. It was a failure. It was just a complete and utter disaster. And he did this 10 days into his goddamn (laughs) presidency. You know? Like, he is no... He's messing up left and right. He's made no, no... There's never been a president that's... Every single action that they've done has been protested. <laughs> like, every he, single he, thing he's doing is being protested. It's crazy. He he <laughs> just got started, and he's like... Like, when he approved that mission, which, by the way, Obama had already in the works, but he didn't approve it because he said there was not enough data. And plus, they, they were telling him that, you know, it makes the most sense to do this raid at the, you know, the, um, what you call it, at the darkest time of the, of the month or the year, where there's, or a moonless night, basically, is what they said, right? And so uh, that was the 28th. And that's when they were like, oh, you know, well, let's do it then. And so basically what happened was Donald Trump was chilling in a, just chilling in a, what you call it, in a dinner, like probably eating a steak or something stupid, and then just like hanging out with like these these advisors that have no military strategy, giving him advice on military strategy, and even the military, uh, our own military was like saying that it was unorthodox and a little skeptical. Now they're putting some investigation into this whole nonsense. I'm like what the hell happened? So he's already being investigated. Like this whole thing is already being investigated, 
and it's like the first real <laughs> order that he's put into place. And I thought about it. I was like, you know, this is what really kept me up at night. Seriously, this this whole thing ordeal. Because I thought about it, and I was like, you know, if I just jot a new job, and somebody said, you know, this is what we got to do. Like, you know, you got to do it. Like, just trust me. You know, this is something we got to do. Um, and it's something really serious. Like, it will put someone, let's say, in the scope of my, it might get someone fired, right? I would, I would say, well, let me look into it more. I know you guys say this is an essential time to attack or change the whatever, but it might be important for me to get all the information because, you know, you know, you guys hired me with the hope that I'll make a better workplace and I don't want to just kind of make the bad habits or keep repeating the bad habits of the previous boss or whatever, right? I would think that that's a really good way of approaching this situation if you get into office, like, do a little bit of a review, you know? And so, you know what? Like, there, next month definitely has another moonless <laughs> night. I don't have to do it, like, right now, you know? Like, we, we can wait, I'm sure. You know? Like, they've already waited this long. I, I don't know how imminent it needed to be that this had to happen. And he just did it anyway. And here, here's, here's the, here's the, real nonsense of this like so then you know sean sean pencer whatever the guy's name is um the guy that's basically his like the way that i see him is just like the 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 parent that's like apologizing for their child's actions that's pretty much how i see it like he just comes in there like donald trump never fucking talks for himself on these types of things because every time he does he sounds like a complete moron and i think they're starting to realize that um but i feel bad for this guy because like I, i'm really curious how much they're paying him because he is just going to every fucking day make a statement, you know? Anyway, let me get back to my point. Um, he He's like, you know, we're putting a, you know, this had to happen. It was a very terrible thing, but, you know, trust me, it's good. And then also they made a note about, like, well, listen, we're also putting Iran on notice because they attacked an American uh, U.S. naval uh, vessel, right? Mm -hmm. And people are like, uh, wait, what? Like, this this happened? He's like, yes, like, let me tell you about it. And this is why we're putting them on notice. And so we just got to just keep that in mind. And then as he was moving on to the next question, someone, one of the reporters was like, wait, do you mean, do you mean Saudi? Like a Saudi vessel? And he's like, oh, yeah, 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 Saudi vessel. Anyways, next questions. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait, wait, time out, time out. You just said a U.S. Navy vessel. And then someone corrected you, and you acknowledged their correction. Don't you think that's an important thing to kind of clarify? Because I, I did some more research on this, and from what I saw, it was not even Iran. It was actually Yemen al-Qaeda extremists that attacked a Saudi um, freighter. So it's like the whole story is like completely wrong. <laughs> it's not even remotely true. And they're using that as leverage to just, like, create, like, more tension. Um, and then, you know, one of our greatest allies, Australia, you know, Donald Trump basically was like, this is the worst call I've had all day, to one of our greatest allies about some policy that he disagreed with. And it's like, bro, like, you are you don't know how to be diplomatic. This is just not, like, you can disagree with what's going on, but you don't go around saying, like, this is a terrible deal. Like, you're terrible. Like, this is a terrible call. Like, what the He's what are you doing, dude? <laughs> what are you doing, bro? Like, this is not <laughs> this is not how you run. Uh, this is not how you, you roll as a president, man. There's, there's a reason why you have to be more measured and more um, thought through. Because this isn't just, like people's jobs at stake kind of thing for your shitty companies or college kids who, you know, went to your college and then ended up learning nothing. This is all people's lives and you literally got people killed now. You literally yeah. got people murdered for no real reason. And um, it really bothers me. It bothers me a lot, as you guys can tell. Does, and, doesn't it seem like his, uh, doesn't it seem like his people are just like, they're just trying to see what, they can say that's a lie to get away with, and if they don't get called on it, they just roll with it. Like, 
Yeah. The, the, the reality is that, um, the reality is very similar to what you're saying. And I think more and more people are starting to wisen up to this, including, yeah. including the supporters. Mm-hmm. Um, they're turning on them like crazy. Yeah. You know, rightfully so. Yeah. And <laughs> I, I, like, like I said, I had some, some friends and some students that uh, were supportive of him, but they also admit that they don't support everything he does. And that, that's a good sign that they're starting to acknowledge that it's not so much because one point I made to one person, for instance, was like, look, you know, I get, I get what you're trying to say. Like, it makes sense. It does. But I'm trying to convince you that you just chose pick the wrong guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like, like this conservative point of view is not entirely inaccurate. Like there, there's some, there is some, there is some good arguments to why we should have some conservative views on certain policies. I actually agree with that. I'm just saying we hired the wrong guy. Like Donald yeah. Trump is not a true Republican. No. That's what I'm trying to say. He is, he can care less. And the people he surrounded himself with are the worst of the Republicans, yep. <laughs> you know, not all of them, but so many of them. And I'm just like, because in the, and that demonstrates how terrible he is um, at this whole business of trying to run the country and it's just really dangerous man um you know even i saw an interview with china and china was just like yo you know like his he's like china is raping us you know they're they're doing this and that he said really terrible things and some guy interviewed some guy from china some ambassador in china and then china's ambassador was like yeah it's cool like don't worry like we get it it sounds bad, <laughs> you know, but we're, we're, we're not going to react on what he said. We're going to react on what he does. And I'm like, thank God, you know, because, um, because if they reacted on what he said, then that would show the immaturity of China, but it shows that China does not have that same immaturity. They are very, they, they understand. And the guy was saying like, look, we don't want to have a trade war. We don't like that's like, it doesn't benefit anybody to go into a trade war right it's no. terrible it's a terrible like literally an economical disaster for both sides there's no reason mm-hmm. and this guy went on to give plenty of examples like and it was great like he kept on giving examples of how our working together has made our both of our economies better you know and he just mm-hmm. kept on going on and on i was like oh man uh even like this multi-billionaire um tycoon from china that had an interview or not an interview but a talk with um trump he he said yeah i like him like i think he was just talking to the actual person trump but he says but he also had a very strong criticism he said you guys should stop spending money on war and spend money on america and i'm like yeah and that's like here's the thing a lot of the people who argue with me on a conservative level they're like well you know we we need to stop worrying about these foreign invaders and terrorists like we need to focus on our own and i'm like yeah i agree i actually agree with that sentiment so how does building a wall do that how does ruin relationships globally solve this problem how does um you know spending more money sending troops to countries that we are building alliances with finally how is that going to fix this problem how is putting iran on notice going to keep the lives of the 5,000 American soldiers that are already there, stationed there? How is that going to keep them safer? How is bombing and killing innocent people not going to radicalize more, you know, terrorists? Like, the fuck? <laughs> like, the, like, think about it. Like, you think that we killed, I think they killed 14 Al-Qaeda in this raid, but they might have recruited 1,000. Yeah. It's just fucking obvious. Like, if you played a game of chess, you know that this was a complete and utter failure. If I know what your next moves are, and I say, oh, I know what your next moves are, bro. Ha <laughs> And you're going to do this and do that. I'm like, oh, well, I'm, then not, I'm not going to do that. And thank you for telling me what you were planning on doing, because then I'll just work around that and take this pawn now that you weren't even paying attention to. You know, like, oh, what? No. That's like that's how I see it. It's just like that's what we've done. Everybody like the the Al Qaeda are not del- delusional idiots. They're just extreme terrorists. 
being a terrorist doesn't make you a fucking moron. And so I'm just really bothered by this. And so I'm going to keep posting and I'm going to find ways to help those people that are stuck in this goddamn conundrum, right? Like a lot of, there were some students that were really excited about coming to the States um, that are from these countries and now they have a harder time and it's so stupid. And so, um, uh, yeah, you, you bet your ass that I'm going to do some stuff to help fix this. Because, like, for me, my yeah, my, my ambitions is not to be a good concept artist. My ambitions in life is to help other people achieve their goals and dreams. Um, because that's more, way more fulfilling. It's way more fulfilling that Milan got a job at Six More Vodka than I got a job at Blizzard. Does it make sense? Like, me getting a job at Blizzard was great, and it was a very powerful moment to me in my life. Um, but Milan getting a job at Six More Vodka was more heartwarming for me. Um, uh, my one of my close friends and also was once a student. He had a statue, a six foot, not six foot, a two story statue made of one of his designs for Evolve, and I almost cried mm-hmm. seeing it. <laughs> it wasn't even my design; it was his design. But I was just like, man, look, he came such a far, like he came such a long way, man. Look at how cool this is. You that's know? awesome. Uh, it, it, yeah. That stuff hits me harder than oh yeah, I got this. I'm working on X Men. Like I like it's cool, but it only lasts for like a minute. <laughs> you know, then I'm like, oh yeah, it's just X Men. It's just the same old, same old. Just drawing, you know, mutants. Um, like I said, it, I I am very thankful and grateful for these opportunities. I don't want that to be diluted, but it's just it became clear to me that these things aren't what satisfies me the most in my life. And I want you guys to have the same ambitions, whatever they may be. You don't have to be changing the world or anything crazy. That's not necessarily um, what I'm suggesting either. All I'm suggesting is uh, look outside of this more superficial stuff, like just being a coming a concept artist, and then you you guys will find a little more happy happiness. Dude, my my long term goals have always just been to like work on cool stuff like that. I don't I don't really care where as long as it's like an awesome thing that I enjoy working on, and then I want to be a teacher like later after I get like you know ten years in the industry or something like that. Yeah, that's pretty modest and pretty sensible ambitions. Oh, good luck to you. Yeah, man. <laughs> like, uh, um, I have a student that had a very similar, because he he's he works so hard and so fast. And I told him, it's like, you know, you're going to get a job. It's like, no doubt. So you got to ask yourself what's next. And then <clears> he's just like, oh, yeah, I guess you're right. And so then he <laughs> told me, he's like, okay, I want to be, you know, a teacher. I want to, like, help educate and influence other people like you did for me. And I was like, cool. And he's like, all right, great. And then so he started doing that. And guess what? He became, he got a job, like, right away, like I guessed. And then now he's working on becoming a teacher. So he's like a teacher aide over at uh, Brainstorm. Nice. So he's nice. He, he sees that, like, he's he's starting to see what I meant. Like, it's starting to happen. Like, he's like, oh, yeah. like And this all happened in, like, a year and a half of time. It didn't happen, like, 10 years. It's, I was like, this is going to happen quickly. It might take two years or three years. But you're going to get a job, and then you're going to be, what, like, in your early 20s? Then what are you going to do? Like, I hope that you live to your 90s, so you still have, like, you know, 70-some-odd years left in your life. (laughs) You know, know, you're going to achieve these goals, like, right away. And I explained to them, you know, the reason why I think a teacher is a good thing is because teachers, you're always experiencing new people. Um, You're always welcome to learn new things about yourself and about what you do to help teach people even better. So it's, a, it's an ongoing growth, right, that I think is very a uh, humble thing to do. And like I mentioned before, that's how it was in, in, the, in the past. You know, people would be trained, and then they would work, and then they would teach. And that would be kind of like a life fulfillment, you know? It's like passing down the reins. And it's, yeah. it's something that we experience, at least I experience with my children. You know, like I'm trying to teach them how to be decent people in this world, you know? And uh, I'm just like, uh, for instance, I, ha- I started teaching my daughter what being grateful means because she complains a lot now, and I'm like, it really bothers me. I told you guys already, I don't like complainers. I don't care if you're my own blood. It bothers me tremendously. And so I told her, I've been trying to teach her what grateful means. And then uh, yesterday, actually, she had apples, and we told her to eat some apples, and she said to her mom, she's like, I am grateful you gave me some apples. Thank you, mama. And I was like, oh, dude, no. You're going to be such an awesome person when you get older. 
<laughs> so you're going to be so good at life. Um, you know, my son is also learning a lot from watching her make these mistakes. So he's already kind of awesome, but it's a, it's a product of her being a good role model to him. But, uh, you know, mm-hmm. but my point is, is that that's super fulfilling for me to see stuff like that. Like me being coming good at art and, and seeing stuff come into like fruition or being put into movies and video games. It's cool, but it only lasts like a weekend and then it goes away. Right. Yeah, that's um, fine, man. But that's just me, right? Like, I'm not de- desensitizing anyone else's passions or uh, devalidating anyone. If someone really does, like, want to see their names in the movie credits and they never get tired of that after, like, the 17th time they see it, you know? That's good, man. That's that's my point. Like, I want that for you. I don't want you to end up like me where I was just like, maybe it isn't so much that I care about being recognized as this artist or maybe it's not so much about being a good at art either it's just helping other people get there is what really challenges me in a, in a very positive way right can i get other people to be as good if not better than me in, in work in these industries you know yeah. and that's kind of how it's been and it's great and a lot of you guys are like a lot of you guys are just um, on the you guys are really just starting your amazing careers so get ready for it. Um, and then, you know, five or six years from now, when you guys are all badasses working for really great companies, when Dominique is working on League of Legends 2, whatever the fuck they're working on, I don't know what they're doing anymore. You know, we'll be like, remember that time we were hanging out in class and you were doing, you were so worried about getting working here? Now look at you working here. Remember when Donald Trump had to be impeached and he fucked everything, but we impeached him? <laughs> 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 And then, and now, like, it was even better because you know people in the world realize that we can't let this happen again. Remember yeah, that time? Cool. yeah, it was great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna all laugh, or um, or alternatively, you know, we'll be driving in the in the the barren wasteland of America in these cars. Dude, like, remember that time we used to worry about we're gonna be jobs? Like, mad, mad. Yeah, like, remember we tried to worry about getting jobs and now we're just worrying about surviving the next Dude, day. that's that's what I've been <laughs> saying, man. That's what I've been saying. I've been saying that like what's going to happen is this is either going to be like like the pivotal moment where like we realize that things need to be just like better and like everything just improves from here on out or this like that moment in the credits when you're watching a movie about like the dystopian like totality future where they're like in the past when this happened that led to this like that's where we are right now yeah, i agree i <laughs> agree in the credits yeah. I agree. Don't people that made a mistake. yeah i agree i agree that it, we're on a pivot point in yeah. human history not american history human history right. you're starting to I see hope it, i hope it goes yeah. a good way <laughs> you see uh, other countries starting to revolt against their own political uh, disagreements it's really good yeah like, uh, we haven't, like, I think we've all gotten pretty complacent, uh, mm-hmm. including myself. Um, so I'm now trying not to be, I was going to reach out to my lawyer friend and start asking him some questions about how to get some sort of education in law. Cause I'm trying to read some of these policies. And I have no clue what the fuck they mean and say, it's dense, man. cause everybody, everybody that I argue with, like, feels like they're an expert. And I, I know for a fact that most of these people are not. And but at the same time, like, I'm not either, you know? Yeah. And so it's kind of like, okay, if I really want to have a strong, like, how, how do I have a strong argument in art? Like, how, how come you guys are convinced to my advice? Well, because you can see my progress. You can see my portfolio and my career, right? There's, there's real credibility to what I say, you know? So I need to do the same with this if I want to, like, make a strong legal argument, you know? Mm. And uh, I just don't. I'm just not educated on that. So, guess what I'm going to do? I'm just going to do what I've done before to get good at stuff. Just constantly practice. Read. read. I spent already like 10 hours of just diving deep in this garbage uh, every day. Every day I, I watch uh, this news organization that I follow uh, and listen to what they write. And I don't necessarily uh, just fall into what they say. I go and look it up myself right after they said it. I look at their actual articles that they're citing. Um, so I'm starting to do that more because before I would just go off of what people just say, but then I'm like, you know, that's like, that's what I'm cr- criticizing in other people and I'm not doing it myself. It's stupid. It's, it's hypocritical, you know? And so then I need to kind of 
not, not live up to the hypocr hypocrisy of my own arguments. So, uh, yeah, like I said, originally I might just have been want to just teach more, but I might end up becoming a governor. <laughs> just like, just like because of this whole circumstance, you know, who knows? I have no idea. Um, but right now, I'm just my most immediate attention is on the people who are stuck in these countries that want to get out and want a better life for themselves. Um, and I'll do it the way that I can, specifically through art, getting people's attention through art, getting people's attention um, through our art events, you know. And just helping people come to our country, man, and start to be, become part of the solution. I think uh, one one thing that I want to say about all this, too, is that, you know, what really bothered me is this whole idea that Americans come first idea. And I'm like, why? Why should I come before these refugees? Oh, just because I was born here? You know, I didn't, I did nothing to earn to become American. All I had to do was be alive. That that doesn't necessarily mean I deserve more rights than these people who come to our country, or, like work their asses off to get their U.S. citizenship, you know, assimilate themselves into the communities, add wealth and value to our, our country um, with a more objective point of view because they left their previous country. They made a very conscious choice to become Americans. I didn't make a conscious choice. I'm just an American, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was like, you, I try to tell people, I was like, think about that. Like, do you, do you really deserve this to be treated more especially than someone else just because you happen to be born here? And I was like, I don't think so. I was like, I think we should be lateral, meaning that they deserve it just as much as we do. Like you have to earn your keep just as much as they have to earn theirs. You know, and uh, and I think that's that's what really makes America great, or it used to. You know, so I guess Trump was right. You know, he's going to make America great again, um, indirectly by fucking it all up, because he has to yeah. fuck it up first so he can make it great again. <laughs> so he's doing that. Good job, Trump. And uh, yeah, like I said, I don't know all his policies, and there's some things I don't know. I feel indifferent about, but this this one specifically, I feel strongly against. I think a lot of you're not you're you're not the only one by a you know a long shot. It's upset a lot of people, rightfully so. You know, it's like directly against our constitution, pretty much. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> it's like a, like the Statue of Liberty, like yeah, the, like the quote on the Statue of Liberty is like you know give us your you know sick and your you know the people that need like refuge and yeah. <laughs> it's, like... it's exactly yeah, it's exactly. <laughs> Like the Statue of Liberty, what we put a lot of our um, uh, symbol symbolism of patriot patriotism um, mm -hmm. was done by the French, our yeah. allies. You know, like it, it was done by other country, another country, as a gift. And we're just like, yeah, well, you know, that gift and that promise that we try to keep. Now, nah, you know, we changed our mind. It's not working out. <laughs> it's not working out because we're really we're we're a bunch of cowards. We're really yeah. afraid of something that's not a real problem. I saw a statistic that someone posted um, that um, you're more likely to get um, you're more li more likely to choke than get killed by a terrorist <laughs> if you live if you live in America. And the, I I definitely believe in that. The other day I almost choked. I think a year ago. I think it was not the other day, but a year ago. It was frightening. My son, he has a very <laughs> He has a very the thin esophagus, so he's always choking. So he's definitely gonna be more threatened by choking than terrorists. Yeah, it's it's stupid. This is whole thing. This is it's a fucking circus. This is a, it's a madhouse. Um. So yeah, I mean, just to get back to art, just to be clear, I'm fighting the good fight for all of y'all. I want you guys to succeed, and I want you guys to come to our country without any kind of prejudice. That, that the people in power are just so aggressively against progression. Like, uh, the Devos thing is pretty upsetting, too. The what? That's a whole other issue. The Devos thing, like the Secretary of Education appointment. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah but I, I, I was like also bad. I heard that. Uh, I heard that the Republicans are also equally like. Yeah, she's 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 not. Not good. Yeah. Did, well, did you? I mean, this 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 can be quick, but like, I mean, did you hear what happened in like the meeting or the uh, you know the the yeah the meeting to like you know for her appointment? Like, did you follow that at all? No. I mean, specifically following this band stuff because that's really what yeah. bothers me the most. Basically, what happened was. Uh, at the time that the vote is cast, it's supposed to be passed, right? And the vote was 11 to 11, and the guy leading it just waited until the last guy that was on the Republican side showed up after the vote had been done. Then he re-voted. And then after the Democrats were like, let's challenge this, he just said no. <laughs> All right. Give me one second, guys. I'll answer some questions. Yeah. I think my doctor just called me. Hold on. I just saw a picture of the Dora the Explorer got deported. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, the, the shit, the shit going on in this country right now is like it's it's absolute madness. Like it's really bad. Like <laughs> I don't like any of it. Uh, it's no good. I mean, also a big a big part of the problem was that like. You know, there's all these people that are protesting and stuff now, but like, like the thing, the thing about Trump winning was that you know he won with like 26 percent of the vote, like the lowest that a president in our country has ever won, and like 55 percent of the country or something like didn't vote at all, and now everyone's upset that he's like going crazy, like it was obvious he would. <laughs> And I'm just like, yeah, that, that's worse. That, that, that means, that means like, you're very divided. Yeah, that's dude, it sucks. <laughs> it fucking sucks. It's like a really shitty thing to be involved in. It's no good. Yeah. No There's, good. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of fear involved. There's so much, uh, I don't know. It's horrible. Dude, it's like he's playing off of like the fear, the lack of like empathy that we're having, like just all of these things. Like none of there's no positivity in it, in his message. It's all based on like fear and stuff. It's like not a good like baseline <laughs> like at all. Yeah, and he's playing he's playing his cards very well in the sense that he knows who to like. That like you also have to think that like people unite them, themselves not always for the same reasons. You know, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of people. You know, they're all walking the same uh, road, but they all have different agendas. Some of them are racist. Some back. of them are not. They're just like anti um, Democrats because they're like they're because they think that if you're Democrat, you're a Marxist or you're a communist. Right. There's other people that are all well, like, very religious, uh, Christian uh, specifically, and. Uh, and that's also a big, uh, big, 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 big part of it. That's mm -hmm. uh, supporting. Uh, it's, n it's not like everybody in the in the Democrat side is uh, an atheist or whatever, but there is a very strong Christian uh, uh, side to that. So this all these people, they're all united, and they all have these different reasons. And I bet that if they sit together. Some of them will start uh, not agreeing with each other, but they will agree in the sense that, like one thing, like there is one. That's what I said last time. There's one big enemy. We have to we have to do something about it. And that's that's all. That's just being irresponsible and not taking in account your responsibility of like it's normally it's your fault and not, it's not somebody else's fault, you know. And uh, yeah, and that's, yeah, I agree. That's why you have to dictators. Yeah, I agree with a lot of what you're saying, man. But I think uh, I'm really ambitious on this idea and optimistic on this idea that um, most of us here in the states are not that way, man. So yeah, well maybe I'm wrong, man. Well, no, uh, you're not wrong. There are people that are like exactly. I, I agree with you. I'm just saying that the majority of us do not agree with this. You know, again, yeah, yeah, again, Trump so, only. Oh, no, no, no. I was not saying that the majority do. I'm saying the one that voted. <laughs> The yeah. voted for, for him. No, and I'm saying those the majority of those who voted actually agree with 
uh, our point than no the, the original. Yeah, they're they're they like it's like you said. Like if they all sat in a room and talked to them and f- talk more about their actual ideals, that they, yeah, I agree. Like most of them would actually disagree with one another. And mm-hmm. uh, but it's like you said too. I agree with uh, actually hundred percent. But they have this. Well, but we got to st- stick together now, regardless. And you said it yourself. Oh, okay. I agree yeah, yeah. that that's irresponsible. But the majority of them are starting to come around to realizing that, yeah, this is, we fucked up. And yeah. um, for instance, there was this lady, man, who her her family got deported. And she voted for Trump. They were Syrian <laughs> refugees. And they got deported. Oh, my God. And it's <laughs> like, unless someone comes and slaps you in the face with the, the, the reasons why this is a terrible situation, people just won't believe it. And it's the short sightedness of the human race is so frustrating to me. And I wish I was immune to this, but uh, I'm not. I'm also short sighted in a lot of things. But the bit brightest and smartest people that we have on this planet are not like the scientists, you know, these like genius economic professors and uh, specialists. Like they've, they're chiming in and they're saying, this is some bad stuff, guys, you know? And, and and no one wants to listen to them because they they take a small major or a minority of us, but they're not wrong. Like a lot of these guys are very smart and intelligent. They spent their whole lives trying to know this type of stuff, and uh, nobody wants to listen to them. And it's very very frustrating. And so um, yeah, I'm gonna become I'm gonna try to make myself one of these types of people. I think I might have an advantage. Uh, over a lot of these people um, because I'm a teacher and I've learned how to, to persuade people to get them out of their potential negative thinking or their the, their the thinking that makes them stay put. I've been really good about decoding that in people, specifically in art. And if I just can learn the, tr- the, the tools of the trade of other things that are more political, uh, I feel like you could do the same, you know? It's kind of like um, it's it's kind of like when you see uh, Martin Luther King, right? Like he was a doctor, but he was also like he was in speech classes, right? And he, I think he was also in drama. So he learned how to talk to people in a, in a, such a persuasive way that uh, people would listen to him. But not only that, he was intelligent, you know. And right now, I think all I got is the persuasiveness. <laughs> I'm not intelligent. Like specifically in this political stuff, you know, and uh, he's my he's going to be my motivation right now. Right, he's like going to be my inspiration in this. Um, just like you know, like Sergi is my inspiration in painting. You know, Peter, the guy I was just looking at and going back and forth with. You know, I'm looking at his work. You know what I mean? And uh, other great speakers who made great changes and were really the rhetoric was very powerful and profound and helped change people's lives i think neil degrasse tyson's another one of those types of people yeah he's just really good at convincing you how awesome science is you know and uh i'm gonna earn this it might take another decade but i'm patient you know hopefully like i said we're still we're not (laughs) we're not driving around (laughs) like fighting for resources you know, Mad Max style. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, <yet. laughs> yeah, hopefully, he, he it won't get that bad. But uh, I, I think that there needs to be stronger tools for people to be educated on this stuff, and then also um, teaching other people how to educate other people on this type of stuff, like teaching other people how to be persuasive with their arguments in a very constructive and non-condescending way. Yeah. But who knows? Maybe not. Maybe I'll just keep painting and teaching painting. Maybe it'll all get figured out. Maybe someone else will beat me to the punch. Um, but regardless, I'm going to do my part. Was there any other questions that actually really attain the art? I know we get political. It's just the climate of the situation right now, right? It's hard not to. It's hard like, to avoid it. Yeah, yeah it really is. Because like, literally, it's, like, the reason why I woke up late this morning is I was seriously up till two, like almost 1 o'clock in the morning just thinking about this nonsense. Like, it was just in my head. I was just, like, arguing with myself. Like, like what the fuck? You know, like, the whole time. It's crazy, <laughs> yeah. man. I was I was like, man. It'll, it'll drive this, you crazy. I was yeah. like, this is really bothering me. Like, this is bothering me so much. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I uh, apologize. If 
is getting too political for you guys. But anywho, um, yeah, before I let you guys go, is there any questions that you guys might have had that you were concerned about artistically? Um, <laughs> keep down. Well, I, I had a <laughs> My I had favorite a monster? Yeah, hold on, let me answer this question. My favorite monster. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's a hard one. I don't really think I have a... I'm not a monster guy. Like, I don't know... Like, I draw monsters all the time, but it's not like I watch monster movies and, like, really into that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? I just happen to just draw them and like to draw them, um, which is really interesting now that I think about, like, how kind of silly that might be. But I think what... Uh, if I had to pick one, my favorite kind of monsters are the kind of monsters that are, like, natural monsters, like uh, Jaws, like the shark. Like, uh, I'm really a big fan of real monsters. Yeah, because they're terrifying. Like, truly terrifying. Even if they don't really have any malicious intent to hunt us down and kill us. <laughs> like, they don't really... There's no... It's, it's nothing personal, right? They just do it because they're just animals. Um, but if I had to pick another monster, I think Alien... Alien and Predator, those are pretty standard. Anyway. Choices. Uh -huh. Yeah. What, what was there, your question? Um, oh, just like, you know, um, with with GDC, like, around the corner, um, which, I, which I'm going to, do you think that, like, do you think that, like, large networking events like that are... Uh, still useful to go to like yeah, do you think that they can lead to like large opportunities and stuff yeah, yeah of course uh okay. will you get a job if you go no nah, you know it's that's hard to to predict um mm -hmm. the the more you go and the better your work is and the more people you know then your job uh, opportunities increase dramatically right mm -hmm. but but will you get one now nah, but like Will you make a lot of good network and connections and friends? And yeah, of course, man. That's how I've survived this climate of, you know, the industry is from just hanging out with amazing people at like parties mm -hmm. and stuff. It's really cool to go to these yeah. parties and just meet a lot of people in a more personal level. You know? Yeah, 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 definitely. And are so, are you going to GDC this year? I think I'm not. Um, because this year or last year I traveled a lot and then this year I'm having a baby and, uh, okay. kind of want to just hang, hang back this year. I just kind of want to take it easy and get back to a more simpler lifestyle. Like that's really yeah, totally. my biggest ambition. I started doing it last year and that was like a big goal of mine. And then it's still continuing to this year. I still just want to just live a simple life, live on a farm. <laughs> Just have pigs running around, animals of some sort. Yeah, I have no interest of. Um, I have no interest to go to these these events too often anymore. Uh, right. Not not because uh, I don't think they're useful. They're still very powerful, and they're very necessary um, for a lot of people. But um, I don't need to. Like mm -hmm. I can skip a year or two. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Uh, yeah, I usually encourage people to go to events because that's how you get jobs. Yeah. Like, you get jobs much easier by meeting people than you do from just texting them or emailing them. Man, I should actually go to some of these things because I never go. Yeah, and it's you, you're decreasing your chances. Or you don't decrease them, you just don't increase your chances. Because uh, it, it makes a big difference if you meet somebody in person. Like Mulan, for instance, talked to Marko Djurjevic, showed Marko Djurjevic his portfolio. They got along really well at IFCC. Um, so it just makes sense he got the job. But like he offered yeah. them a job at uh, IFCC. You know? Because like, it was like the first beginning of the week, we hung out with Party Hard, and then towards the middle and at the end, um, he came to me and asked me like what I what he should do. And I told him he could do whatever he wants, you know. This is, but just don't ever forget about what you love to do, and keep that always in the, the back of your mind. You know, I was like, I don't care who you work for, always be, Mulan. You know, 
And he's all right, cool. And then he took the job. And now he's working there. Doing some killer stuff, I'm sure. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I have another student that didn't want to go to Trojan Horse. And I said, just go. I can get you a ticket. And he's all right, I guess I'll go. You know, and he, I think he like scrounged money around. He, he just really dug deep for money. He got the money. He went and, and the, uh, went to the thing. He, he bought the ticket. He went to, to the event. He uh, hung out with, uh, he didn't have a place to stay either, but there was like some robot pencilers there. And they, because we have a really cool community. And so they're like, hey, you can stay with us. And so he did that. And um, he helped pay for some of the cost and just parted hard over at THU, filled his portfolio. To the guys at CD Project, the guys who made Witcher, and nice. uh, and then they hired him, and so yeah. it's, oh, his name oh. Nem- Nemanja. Yeah, Nemanji, Nemanji. Um, yeah, it's Nemanja. I call really Nemanji. <laughs> yeah, Nemanja. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, another person awesome, that just went and talked, and uh, I have I have plenty of examples from students of mine. I don't just say it because it's like it's better you got to tell your students to do it. No, it fucking works. I do it. I've done it. <laughs> you know, I do yeah, it all the time. Awesome, I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to go either to IFCC, which is in, um, I think it's Croatia. Yeah, Croatia. Or... Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to go this year, man. It's unfortunate. I would have loved them. Or, or, or THU. You're not going to THU as well. Yeah, yeah no. Nah. Huh? That's big, mostly because it's super expensive. And um, not That's because. A, yeah, I'm going to go, but. Okay. Yeah, not because. Uh, no other reason. And it's not because I can't or I shouldn't. Like it's very valuable to go, like I mentioned before. Um, mm-hmm. it's just, there's no, like, I I, uh, I just felt like, man, it's just a lot. This is out of pocket just to go. Mm-hmm. Some of the students that I had, they can just drive or they can take a very short plane ride. Uh, being in the States, it's like now I understand the problem that you guys have coming to the States, you know? It's pretty expensive. I think it was like almost two grand for a plane ticket there and back. And I was like, dang, that's yeah. a lot. That's a lot. lot. Um, And so I have to be real committed uh, to go. Like, I have to have a real real reason. Um, And there's there's actually plenty of good reasons every year. I just don't do it, you know? And so I I highly recommend going, even though I haven't been at all ever. And so uh, just because I've seen people go and they have great experiences and great opportunities right after. So definitely Mm -hmm. is a great investment. Especially for those of you who are just starting out. Like I said, it doesn't mean you'll get a job, but you'll meet all these amazing artists. You'll make new connections with people that you didn't think you could ever have ever met in your life, you know? Yeah. You know? Watch great lectures, meet these people, hear their stories, their point of views of the industry, and get some insight that you would have not got if you were just hanging out at home, you know? So it's definitely valued uh, highly. I highly recommend it. Uh, Croatia, <laughs> same thing. The IFCC, same thing. It's a little more disorganized. Um, but, uh, you know, Marco is a really great guy, and he's doing a really good thing with it. So it's really good. It's, it's, I highly encourage it, too. Um, mm-hmm. Don't go to the hostel. It's super cheap, but, like, I highly recommend looking at, like, other alternatives because the hostel is, like, super, super bare bones. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Airbnb works really well. That's what we did last year. It was great. And then they have, wow. a, they have an Uber out there, but um, I'm kind yeah. of, like, indifferent about uber these days mostly because they treat their workers like trash but i guess you know it's it is what it is if you want to travel there um yeah highly recommend going places like gdc for me is no big deal it's just like a seven hour drive and i have friends who live in san francisco so i can easily just go it's like there's the cost of entry to go to that is like none i don't even buy tickets to go i just go to the parties because i know people and just <laughs> give me in no, seriously, I just go and I just go to all the parties for free. And so, um, yeah, um, some friends went to IFCC and they went to parties, and then that, apparently, like, the, there's a place where people just hang out outside and they met a lot of people, and it was yeah. still, yeah, that's the VIP, people. that's my place. I like, <laughs> like, basically ran the show there, man. I was just like, because everybody would try to go all these different places, but the VIP guys would take care of us, they would close at like two, but they'll keep it open till four in the morning for us. It was great. And we just party nice. all night. It was awesome. Nice, 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 nice. Anyway, I'm going to end the class now, guys. Appreciate y'all. Have a great yeah. weekend. Awesome, Talk man. You Thank you for everything. Yeah, hang out with one of you. You know, enjoy right. your company. Use Discord often. And uh, I'll talk to you later. Peace out, friends. Awesome, See you next week. Nice weekend, man.
Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.